Heroes created by people's imagination live and commit their acts of bravery in our program, The Legend of Kazakhs. Legends are an invaluable cultural heritage passed down from generation to generation. Health is the first wealth, and the second wealth is a wife. And if you have many sheep, this is your third wealth. So says the people's wisdom. No one can point out the importance of livestock in the life of nomads more than Shokan Valikhanov, who wrote that the nomadic steppe dwellers eat, drink, and make his clothes out of cattle. And for him, cattle is more valuable than his own peace. In the Kazakh villages, mainly sheep, horses, and camels were bred. But big cattle occupied a more insignificant place in the farm, as it is not adapted to the conditions of year-round grazing. And especially if it's found difficult to obtain food in the winter from under the snow. Therefore, the leading place was occupied by sheep. Their meat and milk served as food, and the skin and wool were also used to make clothing, shoes, and utensils. The steppe sheep are amazing animals. They stand out with their endurance, unpretentiousness, and resistance to complex climatic conditions. They are able to travel over long distances. For a whole year, they can only feed on grass, and they can graze in different locations, both on the plains and in the mountains. These animals are also not afraid of temperature fluctuations. They can withstand hot and severe cold weather. One unique attribute of the sheep is that it can increase its mass and also can store fat in large volumes, even with poor nutrition. With a shortage of food, the sheep fat can help it survive. The main food is grass, and when it is not, hay. They are famous for the fact that they can eat poor quality, nutrient-poor food, but at the same time, grow well. They were successfully bred by nomads, for whom it was very important to keep meat in conditions of great heat. In this, they were helped by the fat produced by the animal, in which it was preserved after slaughter. Sheep were known to the inhabitants of Asia several millennia ago. In many cultures, the image of the ram was one of the most important symbols from ancient times. This symbol meant masculine power. It symbolized fire and solar energy. In our legend, we will talk about how sheep have appeared in the life of the Kazakh people. Autumn came to the village, and with it, trouble. All of the men went on to defend their native steppe. The owl emptied, and only the women with their children and old people were left there. The women gathered, and they began to hold advice on how to go on. The oldest of them straightened her hair and firmly said, we have sent our men to war. Only God will decide whether they will return. And they left us a house and small children. That's what I'll tell you. Let's quit our quarrels and help each other in everything. Otherwise, we cannot survive alone. There are many things in this village. We need wool and meat and milk. The women nodded. Yes. Yes, you're right, IBB, they all cried. Let's distribute our duties, the others said. I'll look after the children, one said. And I will prepare the food, the others echoed. We do not have horses now, IBB said. Our men have taken them. There are only a few camels, but they are very obstinate animals. Even for smart jigits, it was difficult to cope with them. Therefore, Sabira, you will follow them. You are the most courageous of us, and you do not concede a jigget in agility. You will cut the wool and make the felt that we need. And you, Rakia, continued Ibibi, you will milk the camels, and your hands are strong and flexible. Everyone looked approvingly at Ibibi, 
and listen to her reasonable words. We have nothing to feed the children, she added. I'll choose the oldest camel for meat, and we will survive. The next day, Sabira left the yurt and went into the pen where the camels were kept. She approached the mildest camel and began to shear off her hair. But suddenly the animal jerked his strong body and jumped to its feet and rushed away from the woman. The other camels stomped their feet in anxious screams. And no matter how much Sabira tried to calm the camels, she could not do anything. The women went back home, and in her hands, she had only a scrap of cropped wool. The next day, Rakia came into the pen and tried to milk the camels. But the camels were so stubborn and disobedient that she could not fill her buckets with milk. Rakia left with tears in her eyes. And now the children and the elderly would remain hungry. The woman wept and came and told IBB that they could not cope with the camels. IBB shook her head and decided to go to the corral herself. She could certainly get the meat. But she only opened the paddock and went to the camels and they began to rush from side to side, picking up clouds of dust as they went and not letting the woman get anywhere near them. The large, strong animals loudly shouted, exposing yellow, strong teeth. She was almost trampled by the camels, and IBB could do nothing. This repeated day after day. The more the women wanted to approach the disobedient camels, the more raging the animals became. The children cried out with hunger. The withered old man groaned. There was no meat, no milk, no wool to make clothes. The women gathered together, and they began to cry and complain. Hungry death awaited their children. What should we do? exclaimed Rakia. We're all going to die. Why did we let all the men go? Couldn't we at least have one? How will we cope with these furious camels? If our Jigits did not go off to war, death would inevitably have come to our Aul and no one would be spared from the bloodthirsty enemies. The women nodded. IBB was right again. They cried even stronger. Then Sabir prayed. O oh Lord, you have created the sun and the moon, the sky as well, and you have scattered the stars over it. Please create now a meek animal, which will give us soft fur like a cloud. And you, goddess of heaven, mother of the whole universe, you've created these beautiful forests and lakes. Create the same meek animal that will bring us milk, delicious and satisfying, so that our children will be strong and healthy. Arakia wailed. Yes, the women exclaimed. Cries of, what should we do, were heard from all sides. Come on, said the wisest IBB. Let's turn to our gods. They have always been merciful to us. Maybe this time they will help us. Let us do as our ancestors did when a drought or disease came. Let us find out from our most ancient and wise Kalima. No one knows how old she is. She says she remembers when our century old branchy elm tree was growing. Let's go to her, she will help us. All the women were delighted with this decision, and they went to the yurt where the wise Kalima lived. When they approached the yurt, they saw the old woman sitting on the felt carpet. Her half-blind eyes were covered with thin, wrinkled eyelids, and her gaze was fixed on the mountains to where the sun slowly went over the horizon, clinging to the top of the tall fir trees. Kalima, Ibibi called to her. We've come to greet you. May you have a lot of descendants, and may your years be added to you in the clarity of your mind and strength of your memory. Blessings to you, and I hope that heaven will hear your kind words, the old woman answered, lisping. 
IBB bowed and said, We have come to you for advice. Only you can communicate with the gods. And when the sun rises, you see their divine radiance. Tell them how to ask them to give us what we really need, meat, milk, and wool. Our camels are too stubborn and willful. We without our men cannot cope with them. What is it that you want? Kalima turned to IBB and pierced into her face with her old eyes. We want the Most High Heavenly Mother to give us an animal, meek and obedient, so that any woman or even a child can cope with it. That it had wool soft like a cloud, and that it would give us tasty and satisfying milk, and also that his meat would be tender and juicy. Ha 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 ha, laughed the toothless old woman. There is no such animal, and there never will be on the earth. <laughs> yes, there is no such animal, IBB replied in a firm voice. But we will ask the gods, and everything is possible for them. What if they take pity on us? After all, we are their children. Kalima laughed for a long time, but then she abruptly fell silent and slipped into thought. All right she said in a raspy voice. Perhaps you are right, IBB. For the gods, everything is possible. Now do as I say. Only in the sky did the stars melt, and the women gathered firewood and lit a large hot fire. They sat around it and looked at the sparkling dancing lights. Sabira stretched out her hand, and in her palm was a wad of wool. She threw it into the fire and shouted loudly, Let its hair be light and soft as fluff. The tongue of the flame licked a wad of the wool, and yellow sparks flared. Rakia reached out her hand and splashed the breast milk from the bowl, exclaiming, Let its milk be like women's milk just as satisfying and tasty. The flame hissed, and the white cloud rose into the sky. Let its meat be tender and juicy, Ibibi shouted as she threw a piece of jerky into the fire. The women then closed their eyes and for a long time praised the Divine Mother and the Lord, and they raised their hands to heaven and asked for help. And as soon as the pale yellow moon came out, the fire died out, and they parted into their yurts. The crimson pink dawn was rising from the icy white caps of the mountains. The whole village was still sleeping. Suddenly, an unfamiliar sound broke through the steppe. Whether it was a child crying or a fowl that had just been born out in the thin voice, the women jumped up from their yurts and saw an extraordinary animal. Its fur was white and fluffy like a cloud standing on thin legs, and it had a strong voice with curved horns. And next to them was a small ball, which bleated into a thin voice. The women were puzzled, and they ran around the unforeseen animal and they threw their hands into heaven. The most courageous Sabira approached the animal cautiously and stroked it with its curly wool, exclaiming, Oh heaven, what a soft coat you have! How gentle and obedient you are! Bah! The lamb whined and pressed himself against Sabira's feet. The women looked at this miracle they could not believe their eyes. The women quickly became accustomed to these animals. They were calm and obedient. And the animals were so unpretentious in their care, and they ate everything that the woman brought them. And even in the winter, under snow they could find grass. The women learned to milk the sheep, and it turned out that their milk was as sweet and tasty as cream. 
and the felt was also made of wool, very thin and warm. They covered their yurts and sewed clothes and blankets from it. Together with other animals, camels and horses, and sheep also lived in full harmony. Over time, more and more young lambs began to appear, with which children loved to play, happily running with them on the green, juicy grass. Peace and prosperity came over their native land. And over time, the numerous flocks of sheep grazed on the green hills, and the people began to live and to prosper. For nomadic people, the sheep was and remains the oldest icon of the cult. It is for the people of Central Asia and the Middle East that the image of the ram is a sign signifying a leader, a symbol of honor, prosperity, and wealth. From a mythological point of view, there are two pairs of opposing images, male and female. In the image of a ram, the symbolism of fertility and the sacrifice as well is combined, instilling respect and veneration. The sheep personifies meekness, innocence, calmness and peace, as well as patience and humility. Since ancient times, the image of a young lamb still is a very revered symbol of innocence, integrity, meekness and kindness. The ram for the Kazakh people is a symbol of fertility. Therefore, every so often in the national ornaments, the symbolism of the ram in its various variations, as well as the head of the ram or the horns of a mutton. The depiction of the horn is a positive symbol of perseverance and persistence in achieving one's goals, as is the embodiment of good, as well as the emblem of wealth. The image of the sheep is also found in fairy tale folklore revealing its various qualities. There are Kazakh fairy tales in which the sheep proves that it is no less useful than a horse and a cow, while in others it emphasizes mockingly the ironic attitude towards it. Since sheep breeding played a big role among the nomadic people, there was a ritual using milk, fat, and sheep's wool. Aries, or the sheep, is also the first sign of the zodiac in astrology and this is a capacity that symbolizes a cyclic fertility of nature during the March equinox. It is he who personifies the beginning of the natural cycle, dawn, spring, and life-giving solar heat. Kobuz of the Kazakh people was and remains a sacred musical instrument. People were even afraid to touch it because it was believed that the Kobuz, like the owners of the instrument, were shamans and possessed a wonderful magic power. Let's learn more about it in our next program. Mm -hmm.